So going around the world, you're, you're getting all these complex systems. I mean, even Facebook is a complex system. And how do you do something that Facebook doesn't let you do, like copy your photos off of Facebook and put it on Twitter or something like that? Well, this company, IFT, has the answer how to program your world without doing any programming, which is really cool because I'm not a programmer. So let's see it right now. Who are you? Hi, Robert. Uh, my name is Lyndon Tibbetts. I am originally from Texas. Uh, I, from a young age, uh, I knew I wanted to be out in Silicon Valley. Uh, and so I came out, did the computer engineering thing, got incredibly interested in design uh, probably about five or six years ago. And uh, now I'm lucky enough to be a co founder and CEO of a company called IFT. And who are you? Um, Devin Foley. I'm a senior engineer and uh, lead up the mobile team at IFT. Um, been doing startups for years, uh, engineering for years, from San Diego originally, and um, happy to uh, have found a spot at IFT. So what is IFT? It, it, I, I, all my geeky friends are on it. There's these things called recipes, and mm -hmm. I, there's a whole mm -hmm. language you're creating. What, what is IFT? Sure, sure. I mean, I, I think the, the easiest way to, to, to think about it is, is, is think about it is really the world's simplest programming language, uh, but it's, it's a programming language for everyone. Uh, it allows people to make very, very simple connections between literally anything. Uh, uh, and, you know, we have what we call 65 channels. That could be Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, Instagram, uh, some of the, the typical consumer web services, uh, and also things that aren't so typical, right? We're starting to do things like uh, the Philips Hue light bulb, uh, Belkin Wemo is a motion sensor and a, and a plug. Uh, and we allow people on the ground using this stuff to really define the way those things interact together. Uh, and I think that's kind of a radical shift from uh, the kind of top-down definition of what you can do with the things you use uh, that I think we're so used to in the digital world, uh, but it's something we're really accustomed to in the physical world, right? Uh, you, you bring home something from the hardware store or, or from Walmart or Target, you can do whatever you want with it. Put it in the microwave, set, set it on fire, you know, let it work with other things, use it to hold open the door. Um, we want to we wanna allow you to kind of take that same control with this digital stuff. S since it's a programming language or something that looks like a programming language, a lot's possible with it. Uh, there's probably thousands of use cases. Can, mm -hmm. can you give me three common ones that people would use if? Sure, if sure. And maybe I'll just kind of dig from some of the things that I do. Uh, so one of the things, uh, I'm a Giants fan. Uh, and actually, to be really honest with you, uh, my girlfriend and her family are actually bigger Giants fans. Uh, so an easy way for me to keep up with the Giants is I get a, a, a notification every time a game starts using an ESPN channel and, and, and SMS. And then I get a notification every time the game finishes with the final score, right? So notifications is a big use case. Uh, other things I do, I, I'm, I'm able to actually power uh, my ent entire Tumblr blog just based off things I like across other services. Um, and, and that's uh, not only is a, is a neat kind of expression of who I am, but even kind of personally, I like to go and review all the things that I, I've done. Uh, and so that's a, another really interesting use case is kind of like archiving or, or, or pulling a bunch of stuff from disparate services into, together in one place. Um, and then I think the, the final use case is, is allowing people to define how things post from one place to another, right? Uh, people have different audiences uh, with, with very different types of media and, and use cases across those audiences. How are they able to kind of put the pieces together in ways that are, are really meaningful, right? Where it's not just kind of uh, uh, kind of meaningless auto posting, but actually very thoughtful. These are the pieces of information that I want to share with this specific audience, and we want to build tools to enable that. So this is available on iOS right now yep. and, and the web. Yep. What are the, some of the differences? What can you do if you have the mobile version of IFT versus the web version? Um, well, for one thing, uh, the IFT mobile app unlocks a lot of uh, functionality that's native to your phone. So we can get access to your contacts, your photos. Um, your reminders if you grant us that access and we can use that information um, and you know move it to other places or use it as uh, triggers to act on your behalf so it could be um, if I finish a reminder in a list that's labeled work um, send an email to my team letting them know that it's done yeah. um, so, so um, beyond that also the mobile app unlocks this feed view that gives you like a really rich um, view of the history of everything that it's been doing for you. Okay, 
Um, so, so walk me through some of the common things that I can do with if when I'm a newbie. And first of all, does this cost any money? Is it, do you guys get how do you guys get paid? Sure. So 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 right now it's free of charge. Uh, what we're really doing is exploring the space. How many things can we connect? Uh, what are people going to do with those connections once they have them? Uh, and we think that they're invariably going to be some extremely valuable connections uh, in that space. And so right now we're in a period of, of very much exploration. Okay. Um, as to some of those common use cases, uh, you know, I think right off the bat we see people get a ton of value out of things like Craigslist, right? Like I think there's this this latent need to uh, be able to search something, but think about searching it in the background, right? Uh, your uh, an easy example would be apartment hunting, right? And in San Francisco, that's uh, especially hard. Yeah. We hear kind of story after story about people finding their apartment uh, because they were able to get an email. Uh, when an apartment that kind of met that search criteria actually it, came in. It's great for concerts, by the way, because I, I, I didn't have tickets for a concert on a Friday night. My mm -hmm. wife had tickets because mm -hmm. they, they thought I was going to be traveling, so I didn't have a ticket. And my wife just kept watching uh, Craigslist, and an hour before the show, somebody decided not to go. Certainly, certainly. She put her ticket up on Craigslist, and we grabbed it in a couple seconds and beat everybody else, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. the kind of thing you could do. You could just watch for changing uh, offers on Craigslist. Exactly, exactly. Wow. And as people get better and better at defining what it is they're looking for, uh, they're immediately able to move into to, to, to saying, okay, when this happens, let me connect it to something, right? Like, what do I, what do I now want to have happen somewhere else? Now that I'm able to define with really a, a high resolution what it is I'm looking for. So, if I had one of those LED light bulbs you talked about, could I, could I turn the light bulb on and off? If Certainly, I, if sure, a ticket sure. comes why, from her side, why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should you plug it. You could plug it into the wall and turn just about anything on and off if it had a plug, right? So, I, I think that's that's also one of the, the most exciting spaces is that we think a lot about okay, you know, the Internet of Things. Okay, it, it's the buzzword of today. Uh, but what that really means is, is that at some point in the near future, you won't be able to buy anything that isn't connected, right? It just, even from a very pessimistic point of view, it's a marketer's dream. Um, we have a much more optimistic outlook on it. We think people are actually going to do really, really cool stuff. The problem is, is they're going to have way, very, very different sets of that stuff, right? You know, you don't, you don't go out and buy a new microwave just because it's connected. Your old microwave breaks down, you got to replace it. Lo and behold, you can't buy a microwave that isn't connected. Okay, now you've got this new product, and you've brought it into a very specific context to you. You're the one that needs to be able to define how it works with all the other services and devices that you've kind of brought into this context. Yeah. Um, so I think that's going to be a, a really important thing to think about as more and more stuff comes online. And that's the problem with IFT. It, 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 it's so broad and can do things like, hey, uh, if your microwave is done cooking your dinner, mm -hmm. send a tweet to my Twitter account so it shows up on my Google Glass that dinner's sure, done, sure, right? Sure, Because I'm upstairs doing uh -huh, something uh -huh, else with uh -huh. my kids, right? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why not, right? Yeah, yeah. But most people are like, what? Exactly. <laughs> why, why would I want to do that? The, the microwave has a bell on it. Yeah. You know? Certainly, and certainly. And I, I think it, we, we are, we're struggling with, I think, a very common problem once you start to look at something that is very general, right? Uh, and then we have a lot of ways to solve that. Historically, we have things like search, right? We have things like... Uh, uh, social that helps us filter out a lot of that noise. Uh, and so one of the things you can do with if uh, is define what is essentially a template for this connection. We call it a, a shared recipe, right? Um, you're able to share this recipe with someone else and all they have to do is, is agree, yes, this is a good idea, I'll try that. Push a button and now you're doing it yourself as long as you have kind of the prerequisite microwave and Twitter account. Um, and I think Helping people discover that and comb through that and, 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 and search that is going to be one of our, our biggest challenges, right? Uh, yeah. As long as we continue to, to, to make it broader and broader with more and more things you can do. So this is a big thing we're, we're, we're trying to tackle now. It's that magic of being able to share these recipes that caught my eye and the world that, that you're moving into, the mobile world, which is contextual. Mm -hmm. Knowing where, I mean, this thing knows where I'm looking, knows I'm looking this way, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. knows my pattern of life, you know? It, there's sensors here, there's an eye sensor soon to be turned on. So next year you're gonna be able to do all sorts of fun things mm -hmm. with IFT, with a Google Glass maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're heading toward a contextual world and I'm, uh, I'm writing a book about context. What can you do with movement through the world, through, with geofences, can you do something when I get to a hardware store, for instance? Or certainly, certainly. I think uh, some of that stuff we, we can't quite say yet, uh, okay. but it, I mean, pretty obvious, right? I mean, location, geofences, uh, very, very exciting stuff. Um, I think what's even more exciting is the fact that you're able to define some of that stuff with, with real language every time I'm at a hardware store, right? Like that isn't some 
fancy search algorithm that, that no one really understands. It's like this very definite moment in time. Once you're able to define that, there's no reason why you can't connect that to something else. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest challenge is letting people know that they have that ability once they can kind of articulate what it is that's going to happen. Well, you can connect that to literally anything. Yeah. Um, Keep talking, because unlike most companies that I talk with, they have a very defined use case, and you, you get to hear that in two minutes. You understand mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very clearly what this is for. What else do you do with yours? With, with sure, your sure. I mean, I you know, I, I think last time I checked, I had about seventy-four recipes. Uh, so I, I might be a power user, uh, but you better be. You're yeah, the CEO. Yeah, I, I, I might. <laughs> I be think a power I wrote that user. on Twitter. If, you, um, if your CEO is not uh, the number one user, so, yeah. uh, you know, there, there are just a, a ton of things that that are possible, right? And I think uh, you, shoot, I just did something with with Devin the other day. Uh, he had signed up and used my account, and you know. Typical startup fashion, we have different accounts. We all kind of share the passwords, and maybe I shouldn't tell people that, but yeah, we, we do do that. <laughs> um, and he, he signed up uh, with my account somewhere, logged a ticket with one of our, our cloud providers and said, okay, hey, Lyndon, guess what? I, I just logged a ticket with you. Let me know when you get an update uh, when somebody responds to that ticket. I said, oh, well, shoot, we have a recipe for that. I set up a quick recipe that said, if I get an email from this specific cloud provider, forward that to Devin, right? So, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a typical email filter, right? Uh, but it's that same concept applied to literally everything. Yeah. Uh, and so there, there's, there's use cases like that uh, littered throughout just about any tool that you use, whether it's Dropbox or Facebook or your automobile, right, if that comes online. I, I Could, can we see a little bit about what it looks like on, on screen? And, and that will give people a better context of what we're talking about and probably bring in some other use cases that y you use. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I'll just uh, walk you through like the intro and the login really quickly. Yeah. Um, so each of these screens just um, describes some of the capabilities of IFT and the app and uh, lets people know, um, it's kind of gives them a taste of what can be done. Um, so we have some example recipes in here. Um, so if you're not familiar, a recipe in IFT is a connection between um, what we call triggers and actions or, or channels. Um, and each channel has triggers and actions, which are like inputs and outputs. So let's slow down because yep. <laughs> this is where I was talking about. You guys have a terminology that yep. uh -huh. other people, normal people, don't know. Programmers probably are keying in on some mm -hmm. of these mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. concepts, but people like me are like, uh, "Channel? What's that?" Right. <laughs> so, so, so slow down and talk about channel. Um, yeah. So uh, a channel is basically anywhere that uh, data can come from or data can be sent to. Right. So, um, so Facebook could be a channel. Facebook's a channel. Or Twitter is a channel. Uh, my Y thing scale is a channel. Okay. Um, because I can get you know my, my weight data out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so the power of IFT is it allows you to um, connect all these channels together basically any way you want. Okay. Um, so again, it's like programming without having to know how to program. Cool. And what were the other terms you? Used? Oh, a recipe is the is the actual connection between the channels. So users create and share recipes in okay. IFT. Um, so this example recipe is save my Instagram photos to Dropbox. Okay. So I, I would be connecting the uh, the Instagram channel to the Dropbox channel to create this specific. Uh, Recipe, and then you said there was actions or uh, uh, yes. So the in this case, um, the trigger is every time I post to Instagram, and the action would be save a file to my Dropbox. Very cool. So let's, so, let's keep yeah. going now. Sure. Yeah, have the common lingo down and <laughs> we yeah. can talk to each other. <laughs> um, so uh, three new channels, uh, like I said before, that are enabled by downloading the app are contacts, photos, and reminders, yeah. and we're working on some more. Um, but for version one, um, these ones are pretty well thought out. Um, so some example recipes using these three new channels are um, uh, every time I use the phone's front-facing camera, save a copy of that photo to my Flickr account um, so we can distinguish between front, rear camera, and screenshots, which is pretty interesting. Um, every time I add someone new to my uh, address book, send them a nice to meet you email. And the third one is, um, uh, to when I complete my workout reminders in the reminders app to log it to my uh, job and uh, job own up band account. Now let's t spend some time on the context. You sure. said if I add somebody to my contacts, you can kick off an email and send out a full on email. Like like if I add Dave Weiner to my contacts, then Dave Weiner will get an email that I had pre-programmed in here. Yep. Uh, I can 
I can pre-program any kind of email. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, if, as long as you're using the, the Gmail channel is what enables that right now. So right now uh, I'm using Gmail. If you send me a Gmail, it has an out of office message that sends back saying I probably won't answer your email, <laughs> basically is what it says, right? Because I'm on, sh on the air right now. I uh -huh. don't have time to answer all my email. But I could, using Ift, I could customize that based on who you are. If you're in my yep. contact list already, I know you, so mm -hmm. you're probably mm -hmm. a little bit of a friend and I could send you out a different email than I would send somebody who's just trying to pitch me a company idea, right? Yeah, certainly, certainly. Wow. Can I also look for certain keywords uh, in email? Yeah, so we, we have, uh, the kind of with email specifically, some of the things you can do is uh, you can look for, uh, for, for things with search. So if you wanted to do something like is sent, you know, so every time I send an email, do something with that, or is sent and it, it matches a certain person, I want to archive those emails. Um, you can do things around attachments, right? Uh, let me save all my attachments to Dropbox in a yeah. very specific folder. Maybe organize those attachments by who sent them to me. Um, uh, so wow. I think the Gmail is, is in, and email in particular is, is just so powerful, right? It, it, yeah. is, just, it is kind of this, kind of like we talked a little bit about before, the fact that everybody understands what a URL is. Everybody understands email, right? It's this yeah. universally understood format, at least for, for folks that are kind of uh, online uh, on the internet. Uh, and there's, those are very rare. So if you're using Gmail's own filters, that, that puts you at, at an advanced user of Gmail, mm -hmm. that tells me you're ready for it, right? Because you're like, yes you're like no. Gmail filters, but on steroids, right? Yes and no. Gmail yes filters no. can only filter email. They can't send a picture over to Instagram, right? Certainly, it's, it's definitely more powerful, right? But we also think it's much, much easier than email filters. Right, and you can't you can't set up an email filter and say, "Hey, Devin, here's this cool email filter I use. You can use it yeah. too." And I think that's one of the big differentiators is that there's only a very small percentage of folks with kind of the time and patience to work through what are all the things I can do with Gmail and like, let me test this over and over again. But once they've found that thing, uh, it's it's only human nature to say, "Like, hey, let, let me let me get this out to as many other people that can benefit from it as possible." And that's really where that that, that concept of shared recipes comes in. Wow. So I have a filter for Rackspace. If you send me an email with Rackspace anywhere in the email, it mm -hmm. goes in a special folder because I want to make sure I don't miss anybody asking for mm -hmm. tech support. Or if people support. are listening closely, that's how they're going to get through to you. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you are too desperate, I'll filter okay. you out another way. <laughs> but now I can really do something with that word, right? So look for something that has the word Rackspace in the email. Now I could do all sorts of fun things. I could forward it to a team, right? Certainly, we have a social certainly. media if team. You've got, if you've got like team chat, like we use HipChat a lot in the office, uh, uh, you could forward it to, onto that into a special chat room mm -hmm. or something like that. So I think there, there's there's just a ton of possibilities. That's the big problem, right? There's, there's all these possibilities. How do we service the ones that are right for you versus the ones that are right for Devin, for me? You know, I think that's one of the big challenges. I still wonder how you're going to make money at this. <laughs> what, where do you think the value is going to, when there's tens of millions or hundreds of millions of these recipes mm -hmm. and t tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people sure. using Sure, I mean, there, there's similar numbers in the app store too and they're making quite a bit of money. Yeah. So I, I think there's, uh, there's certainly potential there. Uh, I think right now, like I said, we're really oh. very much exploring the space of connection between things. So if I have a hardware themselves. company that has a new interface, like a micro microwave oven, I would come to you and pay you 50 grand to have it exposed to the IFT audience? Is that where you're uh, thinking? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think right now I would hesitate to, to dig too, too deep in that. Right? Right. There, there's <laughs> obviously some problems, whether you're hardware or just kind of a, a very small, specific startup focused on a very yeah. specific space. Uh, there's this huge need, no matter what it is you build, right out of the gate, to be able to have that connect to lots of other things, right? There, there's there's going to be very few services that can grow quickly to the scale of like a Facebook is today, right? Where it literally kind of touches all these other things and can kind of be an island in and of itself. Um, rather, there's going to be lots and lots of small satellites, right? Some of those satellites are, are going to have incredibly hard problems on the manufacturing side if you're doing hardware uh, and there's a ton of value to not have to worry about how you connect it out to the rest of that 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 world at large right especially when everybody has their own specific personalized context yeah when does if become an operating system um in in some ways it kind of already is uh but i think what the one of the things we talk a lot about internally about this version of recipes and the types of connections we're, we're making now uh, uh, is, is that it's very akin to the early stages of, of any other operating system, right? We're, we're kind of still stuck in, 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 the, in the, the command line prompt, right? Yeah. Uh, there, there's certain things that are really easy. 
Uh, it's incredibly powerful, uh, but there are levels of abstraction on top of that that get really, really interesting as you talk about uh, thinking about what the desktop is right now. The desktop is really just an interface to the command line. Um, and so that's kind of how we think about it, uh, is that it's really a first step in a much longer journey. Yeah. I, I know Google's working on a contextual OS, so you know the OS underneath is gonna report to developers on top what, whether I'm walking or running or skiing or biking or mm -hmm. driving mm -hmm. or shopping or sitting here in an interview. I mean, I, that's 10 years away, but mm -hmm. it's coming. Yeah, you know, because hey, we can do all sorts of funny things to know that we're staring at each other. Sure. If you have Google Glass on, you know you're sure. looking back at me, right? <laughs> you could do all sorts of funny. Everybody stuff. in this room knows we're in an interview, right? So right. why can't why can't your phone or your, or your glasses? Yeah, because you, you know people uh, tweet pictures all the time mm -hmm. in an interview, so certainly, you could certainly. capture that word, right? Yeah. Metadata is really important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ask the NSA about right. metadata, right? Yeah. Um, when you get that kind of contextual OS, what will this enable if to do? And uh, again, is that a competitive, is that a competitor if in a way? Um, I, I mean, think it really just depends on what that contextual OS is capable of, right? I mean, if it's really just about exposing these things that we already know, if everybody here already knows we're in an interview and we're just basically exposing that as a hook that other APIs and other developers can use. Um, I think that, I mean, you could, you could take a couple jumps and say like, those are triggers and actions, right? Those are channels yeah. uh, that we can connect to. And as more and more of those are defined in different ways, if still kind of works the same way, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it's about connecting those two primitives, uh, regardless of what those primitives are. So it's something we're incredibly excited about. Uh, and, and I think we don't necessarily talk a lot about it as uh, some competitive operating system. We don't define ourselves as an operating system yet. Yeah. Yet. I like I like how you used yet. <laughs> um, what do you need from other developers? Because all these developers are building their own little data silos, whether it be Foursquare or Yelp mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. Instagram or Doc, Dropbox or on and on and on, right? Every startup has a little data silo of data that they know about their domain. Mm -hmm. What do you need from those developers to make IFT more pow powerful and more useful? Sure. I, I think it's, it, it's pretty obvious that if we talk about connecting literally everything to everything, we're not gonna be able to do that ourselves. Uh, what we've done is we, we've started with what is fairly closed, right? Uh, we, we define those channels ourselves. We, we look at an API, uh, if there's some authentication involved, if it's, if it's fairly well constructed, we can build something with that. Uh, what we wanna do uh, is, is kind of turn that inside out. We wanna, we wanna let developers be able to define what their services and how they're represented on IFT as a platform. Yeah. Um, the reason we've been slow to open that up is because we're still ourselves defining internally what those triggers and actions and channels really consist of, right? I mean, we, you can see we, we talk about that language and we're, we're, we're still very much experimenting yeah. with that. And so we want to be really confident when we do open that up that we're saying, okay, we're putting our flag down. This is what we are. This is what we're doing. Um, and, and hopefully we've built up enough momentum where, where, where people want to hop on board. If, if I was a ski resort and I had beginners coming in, I would study what gets them on the intermediate slope fastest. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know that if a, a skier becomes an intermediate skier, they're likely to be a lifelong customer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, they're likely to keep skiing. Mm -hmm. If they never get off the beginning slope for whatever reason, they're likely not to become a customer forever. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a feeling you guys are already building a theory of your customers that as they come in the system you know, what makes them an intermediate ifter, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do, you, do you have any uh, idea of, of yeah. things that they need to do to get to be that intermediate customer and become a lifelong user of this? Certainly, I think one of the things that we've been really surprised by is that uh, the, the folks that, that like if enough to be very vocal about it and engage with it, often are way less technical than you would think. Uh, but what kind of unifies them as a group is that they have a very specific need that wasn't met somewhere else, right? Or, or maybe wasn't met in a way that they could kind of uh, tackle it themselves. They're gonna have to wait for some developer somewhere to, to, to jump in and make this connection for themselves. Um, and uh, that's, I think, the most powerful thing is that f starting to define what those needs are, knowing that they're not gonna all be the same across this kind of a wide group of contexts, right? Uh, and then surfacing those needs and saying, hey, we can do that. It's really easy, you just click this button. Um, yes or no, oh, you, you didn't like it, you decided a couple of days later this wasn't for you, turn it off. Yeah. Uh, and I think that getting people 
engage in that way where they're able to meet that one very specific need where they came in the front door, then opens it up to the next time they have a need, they say, well, actually, it solved my problem last time. Maybe they can solve it again. Yeah. Um, how's the business doing? You guys have been out for, what, a couple of years now? Uh -huh, uh -huh. What's, what's happening? How many millions of recipes do you have? Uh, so, so right now we what's have... What's user base doing? Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting pretty darn close to 4 million recipes. Um, so we're, we're really excited about that. Uh, they collectively trigger about 6 million times a day. And so what I mean by trigger is, is basically moving information from one place to another. Um, the last few months have now kind of collectively been the, the biggest months in our history. So we're, we're kind of onwards and upwards. Uh, and I think uh, as we uh, start to, to jump into the mobile space and in other spaces, uh, we only see that expanding. So yeah. we're, we're really excited. I'm really interested in seeing where you go. Right now, you're on, uh, only on iOS. Are you thinking of Android and other platforms? We, I, I think we'd be silly to not be thinking about Android. Uh, but uh, right now, we're only iOS. Uh, we started off there. That's kind of how we, we all had iPhones. Uh, yeah. So it seemed like an obvious first place to start. Uh, yeah. So we're really excited to be a part of that platform. And tell me about the company. How many people are there, and, and how were you funded? And Sure. Uh, well, I, I said 10, but we're 10 plus two interns. Uh, they, they're a couple weeks in, and they've already launched, actually, a ton of stuff in that two weeks. So uh, yeah, we're, we're looking to, to grow the team a little bit, looking for other kind of really sharp and, and also adventurous in engineers. Uh, and so uh, I think we have literally infinite problems uh, and, and infinitely fun problems to solve. Yeah, and how are you guys funded? Or? Yeah, so we, we just raised a uh, Series A uh, back in December, so maybe not just, but uh, that was from Andreessen Howitz. Yeah. Uh, we are ventures and NEA participated in that round. So uh, we, we, we love our investors. They've been, been smart, incredibly helpful. Smart investors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to watch out for those guys. They, Mark will uh, call you on your yeah. bullshit, right, yeah. in the uh, boardroom. A super smart guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's been a pleasure meeting awesome. you guys. I've Thanks for having, to meet you for for having a, us. A long time because you guys built a, a different kind of company than I usually see. And very cool. Thank you. I really love it. So thank you very much. Awesome.